Good morning. Esther is here in real time. Thank you, Esther, and whoever else joins us in your own time. Welcome. We are coming up to Hanukkah, and I was looking for something related to the Parsha because every year, just as we come to Hanukkah, we go into Mitzrayim. And Hanukkah, which is a yantif of, of Geula and a yantif of revealed strength. And I say, gosh, I don't want to do this again. We're going to end up back in Mitzrayim. So we're going to do what we can to, um, to explore the idea of Gevura, or translated as might and hidden love. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Let me let me start the slideshow from the beginning. Hold on. Now I can't see me. I didn't share my screen yet. There we go. Screen two. Okay. Okay, so let's do this. Can, can you see, you can see the slideshow, right? Thumbs up? Okay, good. Excellent. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's start with the capital of Tehillim after. Let's start with just kind of noticing our bodies grounded in the chair and starting the breathing practice so that we can be here in this moment. And I love how Hannah says, in this moment, and this moment, and this moment. Notice your feet on the floor, your back supported by the back of the chair, your torso supported by the bottom of the chair. And notice your breath as you breathe in and breathe out. And as you breathe in, you can lengthen your spine. Notice that spine lengthening and going up. And as you breathe out, noticing the breath going down your spine, down your legs and into the floor. And let's do that for a minute or so. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, and breathing out. This is your basic box breathing, or Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsburg calls it Kedva breathing. Breathing in. Breathing out. And as you do this, notice if you have a busy mind with a lot of thoughts and just be aware of it. And if you can invite those busy thoughts to step aside and let you do this practice, you can invite them to lay down on the couch or take a walk or Find something fun or creative to do, or just notice it and come back to the breath if the thoughts don't go away. You see this picture, I have stones on water, which is kind of a classic meditation image. And why I chose this is because not only there's water there, but it also, you can see that the stones are worn away little by little when we meditate regularly. 
we're able to connect to our souls and to Hashem and to other people wherever they are in whatever time. And by this time, maybe your mind is a little more calm. Otherwise, keep noticing your mind and come back to the breath. I'm sharing the Tehillim, I think it's 121. And I will read it and translate. Shir Lamalot, you can say it yourself. Esa Enai El Heharim, Mi Ayan Yavo Esri. A song for a sense. When I picture the Levim saying this on the steps of the base of Ekdash. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains and look for where my help will come from. Ezri ne'im Adonai Oseh Shamayim Ba'aris. My help comes from Hashem, who makes the heavens and the earth. Al yitain lamot raglecha, al yanum shomrecha. Hashem does not allow our feet to falter. And Hashem never sleeps. Hashem is constantly watching over us. In B'nai Yisrael, Hashem's, Hashem's chosen children. And Hashem loves us as, as a parent loves an only child. Hine lo yanum velo yishan shomer Yisrael. He does not slumber. He doesn't get tired like lots of us do. Lo yishan, he doesn't fall asleep. He's constantly watching over us. Adonai shomrecha, Adonai tzilcha, al yad yimeinecha. Hashem is your guard. Hashem shadows us on our right hand. Right stands for chesed. Yomam Hashemesh lo yakeka. During the day, the sun won't smite us, won't, uh, won't, won't hit us, the Yareach Belayla, and the moon won't hit us at night. Adonai Yishmarecha, Mikol Ra Hashem will preserve you, will hold you and protect you from any, from all evil. Yishmar et nafshecha, he will guard your soul. Adonai Yishmar Tzeitcha Uvoecha, Hashem will guard your going out and your coming in. Meyata Biyad Olam, Biyad Olam. Hashem will guard her going out and coming in, in this moment and forever. So let's take that. I have a picture of, let me use this one. I think this is somewhere in the north, no, it's just all. And these images of Eretz Yisrael were shared by my children when they were in Israel last time. They took these pictures and, and it helps me to open up my heart because of my love for Eretz Yisrael. So let's talk about feeling the Mida, the emotional attribute of Gevura, might. Kristen Neff calls it fierce compassion. What do you understand? How is your personal understanding and experience with Gevura? Do you have an automatic reaction to it? And as we're meditating on Gabora and your personal experience, meditate on how it might have some negative and some positive connotations. Yeah. 
It's not a word that can easily translate into English, Gabura. Let's notice the breath and notice if a part of your body, maybe the left side of your body feels Gabura. Or maybe like you, you have a part of your body which is talking to you in a way that you would prefer it didn't, such as a backache or a bellyache or a headache or a cold. How are you experiencing Gavura in this moment? And let's take a few minutes just to focus on that inside. And you may notice certain feelings, some emotions coming up. And that's okay, whatever emotions come up. With this Mita of Gavura, open up your heart to them. My intention is to notice that this backache that I have on my middle right side of my back is a part that's unhappy and suffering and saying, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. We need something. And I was listening to a Devar Torah on the Parsha. Probably it was from Yom Shlishi, since it's not Yom Revi'i yet here. And Rav Moshe Ganuth was telling the story of Yosef and how the Parsha really brings in a lot of Gavura. And we can picture the Shvatim specifically Shimon and Levi, taking the point of view of Gavura and planning among themselves that this brother of theirs needs to be not shown a lesson because he's lording it over his brothers and he doesn't have an idea of how he's supposed to be. And Yosef was all of 17 at the time, and the brothers are plotting to kill him. And shifting over to Yosef, his father, Yaakov says to him, come here, Yosef, I need to send you on an errand. And Yosef said, I'm here, I'm ready to go. And Yaakov said, I need you to go to your brothers and bring them something. With full knowledge that Yosef was in the habit of informing on his brothers. And Yosef knew that it was not going to be such a safe or an easy journey. But he enlisted in himself the aspect of Gaburah on his way, agreeing to go and do as his father said to do because of his kibbutz aim and his strength. And on his way, who does he meet? A man. On the way, the man was the Malach Gabriel, again Gavura. And Gabriel tells him where his brothers are in Dotan. 
which has the Shorish Dat, which means a judgment. And it doesn't look good for Yosef going down there. And as the brothers are plotting to, to kill Yosef, Reuben suggests, why don't we just put him in this pit and leave him in the pit? And then the plan changes to sell him. And coming back to the Malach Gabriel, it was something else that he said, and I don't remember the words right in front of me, but the implication was that although we're looking at Gabura, the brothers intended Gabura, but Hashem had a larger plan. And the larger plan was that Yosef would end up in Mitzrayim and Yosef would end up saving his family. And that the Galut in Mitzrayim would end up forming us. into a nation and we would end up leaving Mitzrayim as a nation. And every experience that Yosef had was something that Yaakov experienced. And the cycle of experiences of Yaakov and Yosef are the cycle of cyclical experiences that we all experience as Jews over and over and over again until Mashiach comes. But we see that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim happened. And we see that even though Yosef was sent down and sold by his brothers, it ended up and will end up in a Geula Shalema. So that part of me that says, don't do it, don't do it, don't go down to see your brothers. If that had not happened, then there would not have been a Jewish nation. It's not easy to accept Gaborah when we see it. But we see that under the Gabura is unconditional love. The love of Hashem for his children. The love of Yaakov for Yosef. The love of Yosef for his brothers and the embracing and the reconnecting that they did when Yosef put them through the test that they went through. And the love of the ten martyrs when they were mechaper for the actions of the shvatim. Which brings to mind a Rabbi Akiva who's known for the saying, the ahavta l'reyecha kamocha. So let's notice the paradox a Gvura and Ava and Galut and Cherut and Yitziat Mitzrayim. And by Hashem and by the Jewish people, there is no limitation of time or space. And let's just Breathe and meditate on whatever comes to mind around these themes and these stories. And perhaps the stories from the Parsha helps us to gather our emuna and our bitachon as we're facing the difficulties that we're facing right now. 
And let's find that in our hearts and in our emotions. As we breathe in and breathe out. Notice if your busy mind is any calmer than it was before. Or if it's if that part is as busy as it ever was, and that's okay. As Dick Schwartz says, all parts are welcome. And as the Alter Rebbe would say, we can take these and we can rectify them by whatever name you call it. Whether it's a part, or a Sahara, or a demon, or whatever you want to call it, it can be rectified and it can be turned into a more mature and trusting experience and personality. Extending compassion, Rachamim, to those struggles that we all have. and sending Rachamim to the people in your life who you know are suffering. And breathing in Rachamim and exhaling Rachamim and sending it out. As you breathe in, you breathe in the Chesed and the Rachamim from the air around you. And as you exhale, you send it out. I'm going to tell one little story that probably you've heard it before, but it, seems, it comes to mind as perfect for this theme. One of the Hasidim of the Magad of Mezrich, his name was Reb Mendel, Reb Nachum Mendel of Hardak, or also known as Reb Nachum Mendel of Vitebsk. When the Magad of Mezrich passed away. Reb Menachem Mendel was assumed to take the leadership to carry on. But Reb Menachem Mendel decided he was going to go on Aliyah, which he did. And other Rebbes took over, including the Alter Rebbe. And if you go up to Tiberia, you can see where Menachem Mendel lived, where the Rebbe Menachem Mendel lived. There's a little house next to Midrakov, which they say belonged to him, a stone house. And there's a story about him when he was in Tiberia that people came running over to him and they said, don't you hear the shofar is blowing? Mashiach is here. And Rabbi Nachum Mendel said, wait a minute, I don't know if Mashiach is here or not. I need to open my window and look out and smell the air. And Ms. Kassidim said to him, how does opening the window and smelling the air tell you whether or not Mashiach came or not? And Rabbi Nachman Mendel said to them, in my four amot, Mashiach is here. I had to check and see if Mishiach is revealed outside of my four remote. So let's just take another minute or two and meditate on Mashiach and what Mashiach will feel like and smell and sights and sounds and emotions and my goodness, all the cognitive and parents that we struggle to learn Torah will disappear. Wow, even that one sounds wonderful. And let's just take another minute. 
to breathe and focus on how Mashiach feels to you in this moment. And send that emotion of whatever that feels like out to those who are suffering, to the hostages who are still stuck, and the children who are now facing a recovery and their parents and their families and extended families and all of Eretz Yisrael with the struggles of this war, which is not going away. And spread that light out and that hope and that bitachon. And out to Jews and non-Jews everywhere in the world, who, whether they know it or not, need Mashiach just as much as we do. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes and reorient back into the room and check and see if Mashiach has come. You can open your window and smell the air. And I can stop my recording now. Thank you for joining me.